Hey there, church family. Brother Adam here. Thank you guys for taking just a moment so we can meet together and talk a little bit about God's Word. In 1 Peter chapter 2, we find some instructions that are given to all believers. In 1 Peter chapter 2, it says this in verse 1, So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Wow, these several things that we're told that Christians are supposed to put away because they prevent us from being able to love our brothers and our sisters in Christ. And the first one that he mentions is malice. Now, what is malice? Malice just generally means, you know, evil. But here specifically, it can mean, you know, put away all thoughts of evil, deep-seated hatred and evil towards others. And so if you have a disdain and you really just hate a Christian brother or sister, the Bible tells you, you need to put that away. You need to take it off. And that word put away, it means forcefully, just take it away. I remember one time when I was younger, I was out in the field at my parents' house and I got into a yellow jack jacket's nest. They were in the ground and they came up and they were getting all over me and everything. And so in order to protect myself, they were landing all over my shirt. I just ran back towards the house. I was trying to make my way back to the water hose because I was going to spray myself off and get all those yellow jackets and everything off of me. And the first thing I did was they were all over my shirt. They were covering me. I just snatched that shirt and just took it and threw it and just kept running all the way to the water hose. And eventually I got there and I was safe. I only got stung one time on the arm with my shirt didn't cover me anyways. And so I remember I just, as fast as I could, I took it off and got rid of it because it was a danger to me. Well, the Bible's telling us that malice is bad. If you have a deep-seated hatred or anger or you know a disdain or you just really have evil thoughts and feelings towards somebody, you need to get rid of that. It's not only dangerous for them, but the Bible's teaching us that it's not proper for you as a believer to have those kinds of feelings for another person. You're not supposed to hate other people. God has called us to love them. And so we're to put off, we're to take off, we're to get rid of all malice in our lives. We're not supposed to feel that way towards anyone. You'll know that you have malice towards someone if you begin to have feelings that you, you hope that something bad happens to them. Well, you need to, those thoughts should not be in your heart and in your mind as a Christian. In addition to that, it doesn't even have to be that you want something bad to happen to them. If you get to the place that you decide, you know what, I don't care if something bad happens to them. It wouldn't bother me. Well, you have feelings of malice and you need to put that off and get rid of that. It goes on to tell us that all deceit, well, what is deceit? Deceit is when you are trying to lead someone to believe one thing, but in reality you mean something else. And so you might end up you know, having thoughts or actions that are deceitful. You're pretending. You're, you might be flat out lying to someone or you might be suggesting something to someone. You're trying to trick them, most likely in order to catch them in something or to trip them up or to see them fall. And if you're interested in seeing someone else fail, then you are being deceitful and you need to be more upright and honest. That is fitting for the Christian life, not deceit. He goes on and he says hypocrisy. You know what hypocrisy is. It's when you're you know, hypercritical of someone else. When you put on a mask and you pretend to be someone that you're not, just so you can fault find in them. And so the Bible tells us we need to be transparent on who we really are. Oftentimes we're judging other people because we're failing to look at ourselves in a spiritual mirror to see who we really are in Christ Jesus as forgiven sinners. And so we're more apt to see other people's failures and less likely to confront our own. Don't be hypocritical of other people. Instead, walk alongside them, come in and try to help them and then allow them to help you as well. And don't pretend like you've got everything perfect in your life. In addition to that, he says envy. Well, what is envy? Envy is when you are, you know, you're jealous or you want something that someone else has. You can be envious of a person's financial status, of their looks, of their authority, of their power. Um, you could be of their position, of the opportunities they've, that they've been given. You could be envious of literally anything. And so when you begin to be upset with someone because they have something that you don't, because they have an opportunity or they're getting recognition and you're not, you're being envious. And that is not fitting for the Christian life. So put that away because it's a hindrance. It prevents you from being able to love them. One of the things that we do at our church is we celebrate the great moments in one of those lives. We grieve together, but we also celebrate together. And so if somebody has a great moment in their life and you're unable to celebrate with them, are you experiencing envy? You need to put that off, take it away, get rid of it immediately. And the last one is slander. Slander is when you verbally say something against someone. Slander is backbiting, it's judgment through words, um, it could be gossip. And so you've got to be careful. If you catch yourself in that situation, you're doing that, you're participating in that. Not only are you having thoughts against someone, but you're saying things. I mean, they could even be true. It doesn't have to just be false things. But you could say something that's true about someone, but you're saying it just so that it makes them look bad, so it tears them down. Your words need to build up, not tear down. 
And so a great application of that is that if your words aren't love, and now you tell the truth and speak the truth and things like that, but if your purpose in sharing something with someone else is to tear them down or make them look bad or to arouse, you know, some sort of, uh, I guess, attention to someone's faults or something like that, no, that's slander. You need to put it off. Our words need to build up, not destroy. And this is what, and we take that off, and this is what we're to desire. This is what we're supposed to want. In verse 2, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Jordan and I have been blessed. We have a new baby at home, baby Georgia. And let me tell you, she is eating, sleeping, and growing. That's pretty much all she does. But she's always hungry. She's always desiring that pure milk. She wants it. As newborn Christians, we ought to desire the Word of God. We should never stop having a desire for the Word of God. Now, he's not saying this only applies to new Christians. He's just saying in the same way that an infant constantly wants to eat. I mean, Georgia wants to eat every two hours. We should also be in a place in our faith that we put off these things that are not marks of Christians and that we have a great desire for the Word, insatiable hunger for God's Word. We can't get enough of His Word. It's so pure. It's our spiritual milk. And so I want to encourage you today, take off those things that don't please God and fill your life with the Word of God so you'll know better how to show that God has changed your life. You'll be a living, breathing testimony and you'll grow up in your faith. You'll desire that if you truly and sincerely have given your life to Christ. I hope that you, if you want to know more about that, just reach out to our church. We'd love to lead you in a conversation give you a little explanation on how you too can become a Christian. If you're dealing with any of those sin struggles and you want me to pray for you, just shoot me a message. You can do that privately, however you want to. Uh, I'd be happy to pray for you guys. But these are the marks. Get rid of these things that do not signify that you're a believer and put on the things that are pleasing to God. God bless you guys, and we'll talk to you again soon.